in the bustling command center of the Hurricane Analysis and Response Division hard. Jack Sanders watched the screens with a blend of awe and apprehension. A colossal hurricane, later to be named Athena, churned its way across the Atlantic, a maelstrom of nature's fury on a collision course with the eastern seaboard. Jack, a seasoned hurricane hunter, knew the stakes were high never before had they faced such a tempest enhanced by otherworldly interference. Jack's focus was interrupted by the shrill ring of the secure line, a line that seldom rang unless the news was dire. Sanders, he answered tersely. Jack, it's General Vargas. We've got a situation. Satellite imagery has picked up an anomaly within Hurricane Athena. It's not just the storm, it's them. The voice crackled with urgency. Them. The Zaltrax. Since their arrival six months ago, Earth had become a battleground of technology and wits. The aliens, with their superior technology, had anticipated an easy conquest. What they hadn't anticipated was Earth's violent natural defense mechanism, its weather. I need you to get out there, Jack. We believe they're trying to modify the hurricane's path, to use it as a weapon against the coastal defenses, General Vargas continued, his voice grave. Jack's jaw tightened. This was no ordinary mission. This was a race against time and a testament to human resilience. I'm on it, he replied, his voice a mix of determination and fear. Hours later, Jack was flying into the eye of Athena aboard the Tempest Runner, a specially modified aircraft equipped with the latest in storm penetrating technology. The skies roared in defiance as the hurricane's winds battered the aircraft, a reminder of the power they were attempting to harness. Inside the hurricane, amidst the howling winds and torrential rains, Jack spotted them Zaltrax ships, sleek and metallic, clashing starkly against the chaotic backdrop of the storm. They were using their technology to siphon energy from Athena, channeling it to create a more direct and destructive path. As Jack maneuvered closer, he deployed a series of probes designed to disrupt the alien tech. Each probe sent out electromagnetic pulses that interfered with Zaltrax systems, causing visible confusion among the alien fleet. Amidst the chaos, a figure appeared on Jack's communication screen, a Zaltrax. I am Dr. Brist Arlix. I wish to help you. The alien's voice translated smoothly into English, its tone earnest. Not all of us agree with the invasion. I can assist you in using the hurricanes against the fleet. Jack was wary, but realized this unexpected ally could provide the advantage they needed. With Dr. Arlix's knowledge of Zaltrax technology and Jack's expertise in hurricane navigation, they formulated a plan to amplify the storm's intensity directly at the alien fleet. As Athena's winds howled around them, Jack and Arlix worked in tandem, adjusting the probes and recalibrating sensors. Together, they steered the mighty storm into a ferocious ally. With each passing minute, Athena grew, fed by the alien tech it was meant to weaponize. As the chapter closed, the Tempest Runner sailed through the raging storm, a beacon of Earth's defiance. Jack and Arlix, a human and an alien united by a common cause, watched as the first rays of dawn broke over the horizon, illuminating the path to what would be either salvation or destruction. The dawn light painted an eerie tableau across the sprawling decks of the Tempest Runner. Jack Sanders, with Dr. Arlix by his side, surveyed the data streaming in real time on the monitors. Hurricane Athena, now a Category 5 behemoth, roared with unbridled ferocity, her path altered subtly yet significantly toward the Zaltrax armada hovering off the coast. Your plan's working, Jack. The hurricane is intensifying, Arlix remarked, his voice tinged with a mix of admiration and concern. He pointed at the screen where the energy signatures of the Zaltrax ships flickered under the assault of the storm. They underestimated Earth's natural forces. Jack nodded, feeling a surge of pride mixed with daunting responsibility. We've got one shot at this, Arlix. If we push Athena too hard, we risk catastrophic damage onshore as well. It's a fine line. The cockpit of the Tempest Runner was alive with the sound of alerts and the hum of equipment. Outside, the winds screamed like banshees, a sonic testament to the storm's might. Jack piloted the aircraft with deft hands, each movement calculated to keep them safe within the Tempest's relative calm eye, while coordinating with hard command on the ground. Prepared to deploy the second array of probes, Jack instructed over the calm, 
his eyes scanning the swirling clouds that enveloped them. These probes were different, engineered to not only disrupt the alien technology, but also to enhance the storm's erratic nature, making it unpredictable and harder for the Zaltrax to manage. As they released the probes, a violent gust shook the Tempest Runner, a reminder that they were not merely observers but participants in this colossal force of nature. Jack steadied the aircraft, watching as the probes disappeared into the roiling clouds. On the screens, a new pattern emerged. The storm's energy, augmented by their technological intercession, began to create massive supercells that spun off from the main body of Athena. These smaller, highly concentrated storm systems started to converge on the alien ships, their paths erratic and violent. They can't keep up. Their shields are failing under the multiple high-energy impacts, Arlick said, his eyes wide with a mixture of fear and excitement. Jack, it's working. Athena is reclaiming her turf. But success was not without its price. Alerts began to chime more insistently, indicating the storm was reaching levels of instability that could threaten entire coastal regions. Jack's expression turned grave. Time to pull back Arlix. We've done what we came to do. Any more and we won't just be fighting the Zaltrax. Reluctantly, Arlix nodded, understanding the human's concern for collateral damage. Together, they began the delicate process of withdrawing the probes, attempting to lessen the storm's newfound fury without completely dampening its protective rage. As they made their retreat, the Tempest Runner buffeted and rocked, a small ship in the vast, angry ocean of air. Behind them, the Zaltrax Armada was in disarray, some ships attempting to flee, others disabled and at the mercy of Earth's wrath. Jack glanced back at the chaos, a somber yet resolute look on his face. Let's head home, Arlix. We've given Earth a fighting chance. With the storm behind them and the first light of victory on the horizon, they raced back to base, ready to report their success and prepare for the next phase of Earth's defense. Athena, mighty and untamed, continued her dance across the ocean, a guardian of her planet in the most elemental form. The Tempest Runner landed back at Hard Headquarters just as the storm was subsiding. The base, fortified against such weather extremes, was abuzz with activity, the air crackling with tension and anticipation. Jack and Arlix disembarked, greeted by a mix of curious and wary glances from the ground crew. Humans and an alien working together was a sight few had imagined they would ever see. General Vargas was waiting for them, his expression grim yet relieved. Sanders, Dr. Dusty Arlix, he began, nodding respectfully at both. You've done well. Athena caused significant disruption to the Zaltrax fleet. Their advance has been stalled, giving us the breathing room we need. Jack felt a momentary surge of pride, quickly tempered by the scale of the threat still looming. Thank you, sir, but it's not over. They'll regroup. We need to be ready to hit them harder and keep them off balance, he said, his gaze firm. General Vargas led them to the strategy room, where maps and screens lined every wall, displaying live feeds and data analyzes from all over the globe. That's why you're here, Vargas said, gesturing to the assembled data. We need to plan our next moves, and Dr. Arlix's insights have been invaluable. As they settled around the table, strategists and meteorologists brought in the latest data. The Zaltrax, it seemed, were regrouping near the Gulf of Mexico possibly attempting to engineer a counter-strike or create a defensive barrier against further atmospheric assaults. We've spotted increased activity around their base ships. It looks like they're trying to deploy an atmospheric stabilizer technology capable of calming storms before they can be used against them, one of the analysts reported. Jack frowned, considering the implications. If they manage to stabilize the weather patterns, we lose our advantage. We can't let that happen. Arlix nodded in agreement. I believe I can help create a device that will counter their stabilizer. It will mimic and enhance local atmospheric conditions, making it even more difficult for them to manipulate the weather. The room buzzed with renewed energy as they discussed potential designs and tactics. The plan was bold and risky. They would build a prototype of Arlix's device 
and deploy it directly into the path of any Zaltrak's efforts to alter the weather. The goal was not just to disrupt, but to turn the tables, using their own technology against them. As the meeting drew to a close, Jack felt the weight of their mission. We're playing with fire, using the planet's weather like this, he commented quietly to Arlix as they left the strategy room. Arlix looked at him with a solemn understanding. Indeed, but remember, Jack, fire can be a tool for renewal as much as destruction. We are not just fighting to prevent conquest, but to preserve the very essence of your world. With the plans set, the next few weeks were a blur of activity. Jack, Arlix, and a team of HARD's best engineers worked tirelessly to construct the device, testing it under various conditions and making adjustments. Time was against them, as reports came in of Zaltrak's advancements in weather control technology. Finally, with the prototype ready, Jack and Arlix prepared for another confrontation. This time, they were not just chasing storms, they were steering the future of Earth's resistance against an alien threat, armed with ingenuity, courage, and an untested invention that could tip the scales in their favor or unleash untold consequences on the world they were desperate to protect. Jack Sanders and Dr. Arlix stood on the launching pad beside the Tempest Runner, their faces set with determination. The newly constructed device, a complex array of sensors, transmitters, and atmospheric manipulators, was securely mounted on the aircraft. Today, they would test it in the field, directly against the Zaltrax's latest technological threat. The air was thick with tension as they boarded the plane. This mission was more than a test, it was a bold strike into the heart of the alien strategy, a move that could decisively shift the balance of power or spell disaster for Earth's defenses. As the Tempest Runner lifted off, Jack felt the familiar rush of adrenaline. Beside him, Arlex monitored the device's readings, his expression focused and unreadable. The flight path took them southwest towards the Gulf of Mexico, where satellite images had captured the bulk of the Zaltrak's fleet assembling. Their stabilizer is already in operation, Arlex noted, pointing to a live feed displaying unusually calm weather patterns forming around the alien ships. It's working at 70% efficiency based on these readings. Our device needs to disrupt it before they reach full capacity. Jack nodded, piloting the aircraft closer. What's our window? 20 minutes, maybe less, before they stabilize the local atmosphere completely. As they approached the target zone, the weather changed abruptly. Clear skies gave way to gathering clouds, a testament to the alien technology at work but Jack and Arlix were ready. With a nod from Jack, Arlix activated their device. The effect was almost instantaneous. The skies roiled as conflicting technologies battled for dominance. Storm clouds manipulated by both alien and human ingenuity swirled into chaotic patterns. Lightning flashed, a visual echo of the struggle happening on unseen frequencies. They're boosting their stabilizer output, Arlix said, his voice tense increasing power to our device now. Jack kept the plane steady, weaving through turbulent air as Arlix manipulated the device, enhancing its effect. Below them, the Zaltrax fleet was a cluster of bright lights against the dark sea, suddenly flickering under the strain of the atmospheric chaos. Then, a break through the stabilizer faltered, its control over the weather slipping as their device overwhelmed it. The skies unleashed their fury, with winds whipping up waves that lashed against the alien ships. We did it, Arlix. Let's not wait around for them to recover, Jack shouted over the roar of the storm and the engines. As they turned to leave, a communication came through. Tempest Runner, this is hard command. You've got a fleet of Zaltrax fighters incoming. Looks like you stirred up more than just the weather. Jack's grip tightened on the controls. Understood, hard command. We're coming home. The return journey was a battle of its own. Zaltrax fighters pursued them, their sleek forms cutting through the stormy skies. But the tempest created by their clash of technologies worked in Jack and Arlix's favor, masking their escape with sheets of rain and bursts of wind. They landed under the cover of another brewing storm, the tempest runner battered but unbroken. As they disembarked, the base erupted in cheers relief and victory mingling in the air. General Vargas met them on the tarmac, his face showing a rare smile. You've done more than disrupt their plans, you've given us all hope. 
This is just the beginning, but it's a damn good one. Jack and Arlix exchanged a glance, the weight of their achievement, and the challenges ahead clear in their eyes. Together, they had turned Earth's natural chaos into a weapon, a defender of its sovereignty. But the war was far from over, and they knew the Zaltrax would not retreat so easily. As they walked back to the command center, ready to plan their next move, the storm above seemed to echo their resolve. Earth would fight, and it would fight with every gust, every drop of rain, every flash of lightning it could muster. The success of their recent mission had given hard, and its unusual team of Jack and Dr. Briss Arlix a precious edge, but both knew that the Zaltrax would not remain on the defensive for long. The atmosphere at the base was one of cautious optimism mixed with intense preparation, as everyone understood the stakes were continually rising. And the strategy room, filled with the top minds of hard along with their alien ally, the next phase of their operation was taking shape. General Vargas stood at the front, pointing at the large digital map displaying the Earth and the positions of the remaining Zaltrax fleet. Our last encounter has shown the Zaltrax that we can manipulate weather just as they can, possibly even better, Vargas began, his voice steady. But we need to keep innovating. They're adapting, and we must stay one step ahead. Arlix, who had been working closely with the R&D department, stepped forward. We have been developing a series of smaller, more mobile versions of the device we used previously. These can be deployed in multiple locations, creating a network of atmospheric disturbance that can be activated remotely. Jack listened intently, his mind racing through the possibilities. A sort of storm net, he mused aloud. We could effectively control significant weather patterns, steering them to defend key locations or even directly target Zaltrax strongholds. The room buzzed with the energy of potential victory as plans were laid to deploy these devices around high-risk coastal areas and strategic military zones. The devices, dubbed Tempest Nodes, would be a global defense network, turning Earth's weather into a shield and sword against the invaders. Over the following weeks, Jack and Arlix oversaw the deployment of Tempest Nodes in various locations. They traveled to coasts, islands, and ships, setting up and calibrating each device under the watchful eyes of both human and satellite surveillance. As the network came online, tests began. Jack piloted the Tempest Runner, now more of a command craft than a mere recon plane, directing the activation of the nodes. The results were spectacular. Hurricanes, typhoons, and even smaller storm systems responded to their provocations, shifting and intensifying as directed. Yet, the Zaltrax were not idle, Intelligence reports indicated that they were building a massive counter device capable of neutralizing the Tempest nodes. The race was on to establish a full operational network before the Zaltrax could complete their countermeasure. In the dead of night, under a storm-laden sky, Jack and Arlix found themselves at a remote installation in the Pacific. It was here that the final critical node was to be set up a node that would complete the network and give Earth full atmospheric dominance. As they worked, the sky above them was a dance of lightning, a natural orchestra underscoring the urgency of their task. Suddenly, the ground shook, and the air was split by a deafening sound. Jack looked up from the node, his eyes scanning the horizon. Zaltrak scouts! Arlix shouted over the noise, pointing to the sleek shapes cutting through the clouds. Jack's hand went to his sidearm, his other hand gripping a wrench. Get the node online, Arlix. I'll hold them off. What followed was a tense standoff, with Jack using every trick he knew to evade and confront the alien scouts. Each time they swooped in, he used the storm's cover to his advantage, moving like a ghost through the torrents of rain. Meanwhile, Arlix worked feverishly, his hands flying over the controls of the node. Finally, with a triumphant shout, he activated it. The network connected, and the storm above them roared to life, more fierce and directed than ever before. The Zaltrax scouts, disoriented and damaged by the sudden intensification of the storm, retreated. Jack, soaking and breathless, joined Arlix by the node, both watching as the skies executed their commands with violent precision. We've done it, Arlix said, a smile breaking through his usually stoic demeanor. Jack clapped him on the shoulder, looking out at the fury they had harnessed. Yeah, we sure have. Let's see them try to break through Earth's might now. 
Together, they returned to the Tempest Runner, their mission complete, leaving behind a storm that now served as protector a testament to their courage, ingenuity, and the unyielding spirit of Earth. Back at Hard Headquarters, the mood was one of tense anticipation. With the Tempest nodes fully operational, Earth had a new, dynamic defense system. However, the Zoltrax were not defeated. They were regrouping, gathering their forces for what could only be assumed to be a major counteroffensive. In the operations room, General Vargas convened a meeting with his top advisors and specialists, including Jack and Dr. Dis Arlix. The large screens showed the global weather patterns, now subtly influenced by the Tempest nodes and the locations of Zaltrax fleets. Reports indicate the Zaltrax are constructing a device capable of large-scale atmospheric stabilization, General Vargas announced, his eyes scanning the room. This device, if completed, would neutralize our ability to use weather as a tactical advantage. We must prevent its completion. Jack, who had spent the last few weeks in the thick of the action, felt a surge of responsibility. Do we have a location on where they're building this device? Dr. Barf Arlick stepped forward, activating a holographic display that showed a remote island in the South Pacific. Here, it's heavily guarded, but our latest satellite imagery suggests that the construction is in its final stages. The room fell silent, the gravity of the situation settling over everyone like a heavy cloak. Finally, General Vargas spoke, we strike before it becomes operational. Sanders Arlix, I want you two to lead the assault. Disrupt their operations, destroy the device. Jack and Arlix exchanged a glance, both understanding the risks involved. We'll need a full assault team, Jack stated, already mentally preparing for the mission. Air and sea insertion, with a diversion created by the nodes to cover our approach. Preparations began immediately. The hard assault team, composed of specialists trained to operate in extreme conditions, was briefed and equipped. Jack and Arlix worked closely, integrating their knowledge of both human and Zaltrax technologies into the operation's planning. The day of the operation arrived with dark clouds looming on the horizon, an ominous yet fitting backdrop. The Tempest Runner, accompanied by several support aircraft and naval vessels, approached the target. True to plan, the Tempest nodes were activated, whipping up a severe storm that masked their approach. As they neared the island, the Zaltrax defense systems became apparent, with anti-aircraft fire piercing the turbulent skies. The assault team, however, was ready. Utilizing the chaos of the weather, they launched from the aircraft in high-altitude drops, descending through the storm like spirits of vengeance. Jack piloted the Tempest Runner through the maelstrom, dodging debris and blasts, his focus absolute. Beside him, Arlix monitored the progress of the ground team and the status of the Zaltrax device. They're close to the target, Arlix reported, his voice calm amid the chaos. The device appears to be partially operational, stabilizing the immediate atmosphere. We can't let it complete. Any idea on how to disrupt it? Jack asked, maneuvering the craft lower, closer to the fierce battle below. Arlix analyzed the data quickly. The device's core is vulnerable to direct energy discharge. If we can get a clear shot with the node disruptors. Say no more, Jack interjected, understanding the plan. He flew the Tempest Runner dangerously close, trusting in Arlix's timing. With precise coordination, they fired the disruptors at the device's core, just as the ground team secured the perimeter. A brilliant cascade of energy erupted from the device, rendering it inert. The battle continued on the ground, but the backbone of the Zaltrax's countermeasure was broken. Jack and Arlix, along with the hard assault team, fought fiercely, gradually taking control of the island. As the storm subsided and the island was secured, Jack stood amidst the wreckage of the Zaltrax device, the weight of their victory heavy on his shoulders. Around him, the team celebrated, but his eyes met Arlix's, both knowing this was but a battle won in a larger war. They returned to the Tempest Runner, leaving the island behind, the skies clearing as if in salute to their triumph. Earth had held its ground, its storms a testament to its indomitable spirit. After the victory on the remote island, the mood among the hard team was cautiously optimistic. 
the destruction of the Zaltrax's atmospheric stabilizer had dealt a significant blow to their ability to neutralize Earth's turbulent weather defenses. But both Jack and Dr. Arlix knew that the war was far from over. The Zaltrax were a formidable enemy, capable of rapid adaptation and immense technological prowess. Back at Hard Headquarters, in the aftermath of their success, there was a brief period of regrouping and reassessment. Jack spent his days in debriefings and planning sessions, while Arlix collaborated closely with the R&D department, enhancing the capabilities of the Tempest nodes and developing new strategies to exploit the alien technology they had captured. One morning, while reviewing satellite feeds and weather models with the team, Jack noticed an unusual pattern forming in the North Atlantic. Look at this, he pointed out to the group gathered around the large monitor. These aren't natural oceanic conditions, looks like the Zaltrax are up to something new. The anomaly was a series of rapid temperature fluctuations and abnormal tidal movements that didn't match any known natural phenomena. It suggested a massive energy buildup beneath the ocean's surface. General Vargas, who had been overseeing the session, frowned deeply. Could they be attempting to create a subsurface base, shielded from our atmospheric attacks? It's possible, Arlix chimed in, his gaze fixed on the screen. They may be trying to develop a new type of defense or weapon that we haven't seen before. We should investigate. A reconnaissance mission was quickly arranged. Jack and Arlix, along with a team of marine and atmospheric scientists, set off aboard the Tempest Runner, which had been equipped with deep-sea scanning technology for this mission. As they approached the coordinates of the anomaly, the ocean seemed eerily calm, belying the chaotic energy readings emanating from below. Jack piloted the aircraft lower, skimming the surface as the team deployed underwater drones to probe deeper. The drones relayed live footage and data back to the Tempest Runner. The screens filled with images of an enormous structure on the ocean floor, its architecture unmistakably Zaltrax. It was surrounded by a kind of energy shield, pulsating with a strange light. They've built something new, all right. Looks like a generator of some sort possibly to power a defensive shield that extends above the water, Arlix analyzed, his voice tinged with concern. We need to disable it before they can bring it fully online, Jack decided, turning to the team. Suggestions? After a rapid exchange of ideas, a plan was formulated. They would use a series of specialized torpedoes, modified with technology derived from the Tempest nodes, to disrupt the energy shield and destroy the generator. The operation was risky. The Zaltrax were likely to have defenses in place, both underwater and in the air. But the element of surprise was on their side. With precision and timing, Jack coordinated the strike. The torpedoes, sleek and fast, darted through the water, their paths adjusted in real time based on the feedback from the drones. As they struck the shield, a spectacular display of light and energy erupted beneath the waves. The shield flickered, weakened, and then failed, exposing the generator to a second barrage of torpedoes. With a final brilliant explosion, the structure was obliterated. The mission was a success, but Jack and his team didn't have time to celebrate. No sooner had the generator been destroyed than they detected incoming Zaltrak ships drawn to the disturbance. Jack piloted the Tempest Runner into evasive maneuvers, the skies above them darkening with the approach of enemy fighters but Earth had another card to play. At Jack's command, nearby Tempest nodes activated, summoning a rapid atmospheric change. A fierce storm began to form, winds howling and waves crashing against the Zaltrax ships, hampering their advance. Under the cover of the storm, the Tempest runner and its crew made a narrow escape, leaving behind the churning waters and the wreckage of the Zaltrax's ambitions. As they returned to base, the victory was tempered with the knowledge that each encounter was escalating, pushing both sides to their limits. The war was intensifying, and Jack knew that the next confrontation was only a matter of time. The storm front was building, and both Earth and the Zaltrax were preparing for the inevitable tempest that would decide the fate of the planet. The destruction of the underwater generator had marked a significant victory for Earth but the resilience of the Zaltrax forces suggested that the endgame was still on the horizon. At hard headquarters, the atmosphere was charged with a blend of victory and vigilance. Everyone knew the Zaltrax would not relent, 
and the next encounter could be decisive. Jack and Dr. Arlix spent long hours with the research team, analyzing every scrap of data they had obtained from the recent missions. The information was invaluable, revealing not only the technological advancements of the Zaltrax, but also their strategic patterns. One thing is clear, Arlix noted during one of their strategy meetings. The Zaltrax are now fully aware of our capability to manipulate weather as a defensive tool. They are likely to develop more submerged or shielded facilities to avoid our atmospheric assaults. General Vargas, overseeing the session, responded, Then we need to enhance our surveillance capabilities and prepare for a direct confrontation. We cannot allow them to establish a stronghold from which they could launch a global assault. The team agreed to deploy additional satellites and underwater drones around critical areas, particularly focusing on the Atlantic and Pacific convergences, where Zoltrak's activity had been increasingly frequent. Meanwhile, the engineering team, inspired by the previous successes of the Tempest nodes, developed a new series of aerial drones capable of rapid deployment and high-altitude atmospheric manipulation. These drones were designed to create localized storm systems that could be directed against Zaltrax forces, enhancing the natural weather phenomena to an even greater extent. As preparations were underway, an urgent alert came from the surveillance team. Large-scale movement detected, one of the analysts reported, pointing to a cluster of blips on the radar that covered the mid-Pacific. It appears the Zaltrax are mobilizing towards what looks like a pre-established rally point. The command center buzzed into action, with Jack and Arlix at the forefront of the response. This could be the precursor to a major offensive, Jack speculated. We should intercept them before they consolidate their forces. With General Vargas's approval, a fleet of interceptors, along with the Tempest Runner and the newly developed atmospheric drones, set out towards the Pacific. The journey was tense, with every team member aware of the stakes. As they approached the coordinates, the ocean below was calm, almost eerily so. Arlix, monitoring the atmospheric readings, noted, The calm before the storm, quite literally. We're in the right place. Jack piloted the Tempest Runner into a high-altitude position as the interceptors spread out around them. Below, the shapes of Zaltrak's ships began to emerge from the horizon, moving in a tight formation that spoke of military precision. As the battle commenced, the Zaltrax ships struggled against the dual assault from the air and sea. The interceptors took advantage of the chaos, targeting key ships and seeking to disrupt the enemy's command structure. Amidst the storm, the Tempest Runner moved like a shadow, striking swiftly and retreating before the Zaltrax could coordinate their defenses. Jack's focus was unyielding, every maneuver carefully calculated to keep them one step ahead of the enemy. The clash continued, a testament to the determination of Earth's defenders and the tenacity of the Zaltrax. But with every minute, the advantage shifted as the storm, a product of human ingenuity and the raw power of nature, overwhelmed the alien invaders. Jack looked out over the turbulent waters, the storm easing now that the drones were recalled. Beside him, Arlix let out a long breath, a mixture of relief and fatigue evident in his posture. We've held them back for now, Jack said, his voice filled with both satisfaction and the sobering knowledge of the ongoing struggle. Arlix nodded, replying, Yes, but this war is far from over. They will regroup, and so will we. And each time, we will be ready. As they headed back to base, the storm clouds breaking around them to reveal a glimpse of clear sky, there was a sense of unity and purpose. Earth was not just fighting for survival, but fighting to remain unbroken, a testament to the spirit of all its inhabitants, human and otherwise. The battle had been won, but the war for Earth's future raged on. 
In the weeks following the tumultuous battle in the Pacific, the global community remained on high alert. The Zoltraks had withdrawn to the outer reaches of the solar system, their movements closely monitored by HARD's enhanced satellite network. The pause in direct confrontation provided Earth with a much-needed respite, but it was a tense peace, filled with the anticipation of future conflicts. At HARD headquarters, the atmosphere was one of rigorous preparation and strategic planning. Jack and Dr. Nikas Arlex were at the center of these efforts, continually refining the Tempest nodes and the aerial drone technology. Their goal was clear, to ensure that Earth would never again be caught off guard by the Zoltrax or any other potential threats. During one late evening in the strategy room, General Vargas addressed the team with a somber tone. We have managed to secure our skies and shores for now, but this war has shown us the vulnerabilities we face as a planet. We need to think bigger to create a unified planetary defense system. Jack nodded in agreement, his thoughts on the countless lives affected by the invasion. We've seen what we can do when we combine our efforts, technology, strategy, and the raw power of Earth itself. We need to harness that on a global scale. Dr. Arlix, who had become not just an ally, but a symbol of hope for a peaceful future among the stars, added, the Zoltraks are not the only beings out there. The universe is vast, and we may face other challenges. Earth must be prepared, not just to defend, but to reach out in the spirit of cooperation. The conversation led to the formation of a new initiative, the Global Defense and Cooperation Network GDCN, a comprehensive alliance of nations and extraterrestrial representatives like Arlix. Their first task was to construct a series of orbital and suborbital platforms equipped with advanced weather control and defensive technologies. Over the next several months, Jack found himself more in space than on Earth, supervising the construction of the first of these platforms, named the Sentinel Array. Positioned in geostationary orbit, the Sentinel Array was designed to monitor planetary conditions and act as a first line of defense against any approaching threats. Back on Earth, the impact of the Zoltrax invasion had led to significant changes. Nations that had once been at odds now shared technology and resources, unified under the threat they had collectively faced. The environmental disruptions caused by the use of weather as a weapon were also being addressed, with new ecological restoration projects initiated to heal the planet. As the Sentinel Array went online, Jack and Arlix stood in the control center aboard the platform, looking down at the earth below a blue and green jewel enveloped by thin wisps of clouds. It was a poignant moment, reflecting on all they had achieved and the unknown future ahead. The Zaltrax taught us a harsh lesson, Jack said quietly, his eyes on the planet. But they also brought us together in ways we couldn't have imagined. Arlix nodded, his gaze also earthward. In every crisis, there is an opportunity. Earth has seized its opportunity to not just survive but thrive, and perhaps in time teach others what it means to protect one's home. Their attention was drawn to a report coming in a minor meteorological anomaly being adjusted by the Sentinel Array without human intervention. It was a small but significant demonstration of what they had built, a self-regulating responsive system that protected the entire planet. As the report confirmed the anomaly's resolution, Jack and Arlix shared a look of satisfaction. The war had been hard fought and peace was still fragile, but they had forged something enduring. The Sentinel Array was not just a shield against the stars, but a beacon of unity and strength. The story of their struggle, resilience, and ultimate unity echoed across Earth, a testament to what could be achieved when humanity reached beyond its limits and faced the cosmos not with fear, but with courage and cooperation. As the sun set against the Earth, casting a soft glow over the continents, Jack felt a deep, abiding hope. The echoes of war had transformed into the whispers of a promising future. The inauguration of the Sentinel Array marked a new era for Earth. It wasn't just a technological triumph, but a symbol of Earth's newfound unity and resilience. As the leader of the Global Defense and Cooperation Network GDCN, Jack Sanders found himself at the forefront of an unprecedented alliance involving nations and alien entities alike. Dr. Polis Arlix too had become a key figure, representing not just the Zoltraks who sought peace, but all extraterrestrial beings interested in friendly relations with Earth. 
One crisp morning, as the first light of dawn crept across the control deck of the Sentinel Array, Jack and Arlix met with a delegation of diplomats and scientists from various corners of the galaxy. The gathering was historic, the first of its kind held in orbit, symbolizing the protective embrace Earth now extended towards others. Welcome to the Sentinel Array, Jack began, his voice echoing slightly in the vast chamber designed to accommodate various species. This facility is more than just a defense system. It's a bridge between Earth and the stars. The delegates, ranging from humanoid to the more exotic, expressed their admiration and curiosity about the technology that melded Earth's natural forces with advanced alien engineering. As the meeting progressed, discussions turned to mutual defense treaties, scientific exchanges, and the sharing of ecological preservation techniques. Dr. Tins Arlix, ever the scientist, led a segment on the adaptability of Earth's weather manipulation technologies, suggesting ways these could be used for terraforming efforts on barren worlds or stabilizing climates in crisis on others. What we have learned from defending our world can help protect and renew others, he explained, his voice filled with passion for the subject. The talks concluded with the signing of several accords, dubbed the Terra Protocols, which established guidelines for interstellar cooperation on defense and environmental management. As the delegates prepared to depart, Jack felt a profound sense of accomplishment, but also a burgeoning responsibility. Earth was no longer an isolated player, but a pivotal hub in a network of interstellar relations. In the following weeks, Jack and Arlix traveled to various planets as part of a diplomatic tour, witnessing the diverse cultures and challenges of their new allies. On each world, they shared Earth's story, a testament to the power of unity in the face of adversity, and learned from the experiences of others. Upon returning to Earth, Jack visited the areas most affected by the Zaltrax invasion and the subsequent climatic upheavals. He met with community leaders and citizens, listening to their stories of survival and recovery. These visits were crucial, grounding his work in the reality of its impact on everyday lives. Meanwhile, the ecological restoration projects initiated after the Zaltrax retreat were showing signs of success. Areas once marred by unnatural weather phenomena were beginning to thrive again. The revival of these ecosystems was a metaphor for Earth itself resilient, enduring capable of healing after even the most devastating storms. As Jack stood on a cliff overlooking a rejuvenated coastline, the ocean below sparkling under the afternoon sun, he reflected on the journey from the first days of the Zaltrax invasion to now. Earth had not only survived, it had become a beacon of hope and cooperation. The battles fought had forged new paths, not just for defense, but for understanding and mutual growth. Dr. Arlex joined him, looking out at the horizon. What's next for us, Jack? he asked, his tone contemplative. Jack smiled his eyes on the horizon where the sky met the sea. We keep building, keep learning. We make sure that what we've created here serves as a foundation, not just a moment in time. We keep reaching out, making sure that the peace we've fought so hard for is the kind that lasts. Together, they watched as the sun dipped below the ocean, the sky painted with hues of orange and purple. It was a beautiful, peaceful sight, a daily reminder of the planet they had fought so hard to protect. And as the stars began to twinkle in the evening sky, Earth's ambassadors of peace looked forward to a future not bound by fear, but guided by the hopeful light of distant stars. Years had passed since the Sentinel Array was first activated, and the world had transformed in ways that Jack Sanders had only dared to hope. The Global Defense and Cooperation Network GDCN had grown now encompassing a vast network of planets and species, each contributing to a collective repository of knowledge and defense capabilities. Earth was no longer just a defended world, but a central hub in a thriving interstellar community. Jack, older now, with streaks of silver threading through his hair, had taken a less active role in the day-to-day -day operations of GDCN. He had passed on the mantle of leadership, but remained a revered figure, often called upon for advice, and to share his experiences with new generations of defenders and diplomats. On a clear, brisk morning, Jack visited a memorial dedicated to those who had fallen during the Zaltrax invasion and the subsequent battles. The memorial, located near the coast that had seen one of the first landings, stood as a stark reminder of the cost of peace. 
It was a beautiful, solemn place where names were engraved in stone, surrounded by greenery and the sounds of the ocean. As he walked among the names, his fingers tracing the cold etched letters, he reflected on the journey that had brought them here. The world had changed, yes, and they had faced unimaginable challenges, but through it all they had found new ways to come together, transcending old boundaries and fears. Later that day, Jack was scheduled to speak at the University of Global Defense and Environmental Sciences, a new institution that combined the study of planetary defense with ecological stewardship. The university was a direct result of the lessons learned during and after the invasion, a place where young people from across the galaxy came to learn and prepare. Standing at the podium, looking out at the young, eager faces in the audience, Jack felt a surge of pride and hope. When the Zaltrax first arrived, we saw them as invaders, as enemies, he began, his voice steady and clear. But from that conflict, we learned the importance of understanding, of reaching out and finding common ground. We learned that our greatest defense isn't just our technology or our ability to wield the forces of nature, but our capacity to unite and cooperate. The students listened, rapt, as Jack shared stories of the battles, of the alliances formed with Dr. Arlix and others, and of the critical moments that had defined their path to peace. Each of you is here because you believe in a better future, Jack continued a future where conflicts are resolved not on the battlefield, but through dialogue and mutual respect. A future where we not only defend our worlds, but also take care of them. The lecture concluded with a standing ovation, the applause ringing in Jack's ears as he stepped down from the podium, greeted by faculty and students alike, eager to speak with him, to learn from his experiences. As the day faded into evening, and the stars began to appear in the sky, Jack stood outside, his eyes lifted to the heavens. The stars were no longer distant, cold points of light. They were destinations, homes to friends and allies, part of a broader, shared community. In the quiet of the night, Jack felt a deep, abiding peace. The legacy of the storm was not just survival, but growth, understanding, and the unyielding hope that no matter what challenges lay ahead, Earth and its allies would face them together with courage and unity. This, he knew, was just the beginning.